Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to our Open TTD Series 3 Let's Play. I'm here again with Mad Mike and Mark Isle. Hello, guys. Hello. Uh, and yeah. this time, uh, we're going to be carrying on with this network that we've got going here. We've been having a look at the water situation, and it's a bit sparse. Not many of these water towers have a great amount in that we want. So it seems to be the ones that we want near our big cities just don't have that much in. 81,000 isn't really that fantastic, I don't think. But I'm going to start by putting a passenger service in at Benfingway. Uh, there's a nice little corner piece here. I'm going to remove a statue and one piece of road. And uh, that shall be enough to get our passenger st uh, station in just there. Uh, what I will do... Now, which way does the line go? We need to get the signals uh, further along this line. So let's make them go all the way. It's going to cost about four grand. We haven't got a massive amount of money, but if we need a bit of a boost, uh, Mad Mike informed me not long ago that the uh, maximum loan went up. And then uh, Mark Isle, you said that we it probably wouldn't be worth it, or was it the other way around? I can't remember now. The other way around. All right. So, I'm going to just put that in like that. It's not perfect, but it will do for now. Uh, and then the exit. What do you think, guys? Do you think we can afford to remove this hill in the middle? Uh, yeah, take it out. Mark Isle says take it out. Mad Mike said... Uh, there we go. It's out. Um, and that means now that I'm going to be... Oops. That's fine. I'm going to need a little slit. Um, so let me just create a little slit here. I'm going to hold control to dig that out. Do a nice little diagonal through. Oh, look at that. That that, <laughs> that is fantastic. The only thing is, I've done it again. If trains want to come in from the other direction, they can't. Tough. <laughs> is, that, is that your sum advice there, Mark Isle? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Currently, trains will not want to come in from the other direction. That is true. Should we carry on like this for now? Yeah, go with it. Okay. Well, there we go. Uh, I've put a depot in. Um, and that means Mad Mike can get right to work with uh, buying us a train. Yay, trains! <laughs> Seems to be a bit of a theme at the minute, Mike, that you're popping all the trains in for us. Maybe we should switch roles. Um, oh yeah, what happened here to the track? Oh, is Mark Kyle trying to figure out a way of connecting it up? Indeed. Oh, I went up. Oh, that's because of the signal. Yeah. Alright, so where exactly is this train wanting to go? Um, well, we're going to go from Benfingway to one of the other three, whichever seems to have the most passengers, I would say. Generally. Alrighty. Um, probably just Dronning Hall. That one mm -hmm. seems to be doing quite well in terms of passengers overall. The ratings are not fantastic yet. And to be honest, I think we're going to have to use spread stations to make this to make it viable. Uh, what do you guys think? I think you're desperate for a spread station. <laughs> I think I am fairly desperate for a spread station. Um, yeah, I, th I think we're going to have to put some in to actually make this work. Which is, which is a shame, Rip. Uh, I just realised we've got two stations that are named exactly the same thing. But even though they're two separate stations. Interesting. Yeah, I've just changed one to Dronning Hall Central. I don't know if that was me who did that. <laughs> it's a possibility. I'm up for blaming you. Yeah, no, don't just blame me. Oh. Mike, are we blaming him? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I thought it was him. Okay, everything is Hellish's fault. Yep. Right then. Uh, Dronning Hill Central should have quite a few more passengers now compared to what it just had. Oh, goody. In fact, it just jumped up to 35 passengers. 
Is this tra is this the first train from up north on the north? Yes, it is. It's picking up all those passengers, and it's going to loop back round. Is it going to crash with this other train? No, it's going to flow flawlessly through. Look at oh, almost, almost flawlessly. <laughs> Had to pause for a moment as it swapped lines. But to be honest, I quite like this little network we've got going here. Right, um, we'll let that carry on going. I'm going to put some spread stations in the other towns as well. Uh, it might be that in the future we can just take them out. Maybe. Um, who knows? So we've got one over here, one over here. We yep. could do with one. Let's put one up here. There we go. <coughs> right, what's the next project on the list, guys? And Mark Isle, what have you done to these lines? They work. Leave them alone. You've got so many 90 degree turns there, it's unbelievable. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. They'll get to full speed once they're on the main track. No, trains oh. can't do those sorts of 90 degree turns. Yeah, they can. No, they can't. They can do a 180. They cannot do the one... What? No, they can't. Yeah, they can. You click turn around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a 180 right there. They, they can do... They can do a 180 there. Um, so you're telling me in the middle of a track they can do a 180 but they can't do a 90 degree turn? Correct. How ridiculous. Actually, disallowed train reversing is on, so they can't do that unless you give them the order. So that's that's pretty good. That might require a second train, or at least maybe a train to Kedham, because a lot of passengers. Yeah. Building up. I see you've just modified that, Mark Isle. Yep. It still doesn't work around the depot. Maybe we should take that depot out. Yeah, I didn't build the depot. Well, I wasn't. I wasn't planning on you putting other <laughs> stuff in the other direction. Should always plan for the unexpected. But it's unexpected. How can you plan for it? Plan for every eventuality. <laughs> Indeed. Then there are no unexpecteds. What oh great! Now train sixteen has a void order. Oh! Oh! Oh dear! Well, someone just deleted his depot, so... <laughs> That's okay. He, I'm sure we can sort that out. I didn't do it. Let's just fix this bit up here. There we are, Markarl. It's okay now. It was okay anyway. No one. It's just... Oh, actually, these signals are okay where they were. That signal's all right. Let's put the signals in. Oh, what, oh my word. Yeah, that works, I think. No, it doesn't. No, it did return. Um, still, that doesn't work. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Hold. I think I know what you're going to do. And it's going to be horrible. <laughs> it won't let me do it. <laughs> You know what? Screw it. There we are. Sorted. Fixed. <laughs> no! I just made it work. <laughs> no, you didn't. You made it look horrible. I made it work. No, you didn't. I did. It's your imagination. There we go. All fine now. Yeah? It was fine anyway. It was not <laughs> fine anyway. I know Mike's keeping out of this particular conversation. Mm hmm. He knows better than to get involved. Not that that line actually goes anywhere at the minute, but never mind. Right, well, uh, let's check on our operating profit. We still haven't got a lot of money, but we're spending it quite nicely. Uh, operating profit has seemed to zigzag. I think that depends on how much cargo we've delivered. So let's have a look. Uh, 
delivered cargo graph. Yeah, that's that's varied quite a little bit. Up and down, up and down there. Um, but our operating profit is now higher than it ever has been. Just above the 61, uh, 63,000, I think. Which is not bad. Not bad at all. We're getting there with it all. Slowly, but surely. Yeah, slowly but surely. 150,000. Um, Mike, did you want to build something? No, I'm good. You're good, you're good. Okay, well, Mark Isle, did you want to link up the maze and fruit that's behind Penfing Way and Kedem? Maze and fruit. Yeah, the, it's, uh... on the, it's on the north coast there. There's, there's a maize farm that doesn't do a lot, and there's a fruit farm just around the corner as well. And there's actually a factory right up there as well. So maybe we could take it Where's to... Where's the fruit? The fruit is just further up on the north coast near the uh, oil refinery. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're both rubbish. Yes, they're both terrible. But we have to work with what we've got. There's nothing else further around. I mean, there's so... diamond mines all over the place around here. Well, I say all over the place, there is two. Um, but there's also copper ore mines, so it's obviously the mining area. There's three copper ore mines and two diamond... No, four copper ore mines. Five copper ore mines. Wow, this is the copper zone. Really is. Maybe we should start exploiting some of these resources for cheap and easy money. Yeah, possibly. <coughs> Although, as we come over more to the east, there's a lot more fruit and more maize. None of the, in fact, something else that I found earlier as well, uh, I think I mentioned it to you guys in between recordings, uh, there is two farms over here to the west. One does 90 tonnes of maize and one does 80 tonnes. And both of them are in a very large area, they've got very big farmland all over the place. And then just to the east of them, there's this little tiny farm here on the river side. And it has hardly any fields at all. It's just a little bit round the river. And it does 99 tonnes of maize. Um, which just proves that the size of the farmland definitely does not dictate uh, how much uh, a farm does produce. There you are. There, there it is on the screen. We know for, for sure now we can destroy as much farmland as we like. Um, hmm. Just having a little look around here. Uh, well, maybe instead of going up north there, maybe we should try and... Oh, I was just about to say, maybe we should try and link up the stuff around Tadpole Lake. And guess what Mark Isle is doing? I, I'm not doing anything. You can't prove it. What do you mean I can't prove it? I'm recording it here. There's going to be a not. video on YouTube showing you exactly what you're doing. No, there isn't. You just think there is. Uh, well, it looks like we've got a single loopy bit there to a food processing plant. Okay. And then another one to that bit. Okay. Um, is there a rubber plantation nearby? I thought there was, but there isn't, is there? The rubber doesn't go to this. Not rubber, sorry. I meant fruit. It's um a shame there's no like large uh, city type thing on the other side of Tadpole Lake that needs food, so you could just ship it across. Uh, I'm going to send it down to the two cities below that oh, both require food. Yeah, we've got water going there, but let's see if it's actually registering. It well, is. One of them's in green belt, so it doesn't need it, and the other one is registering water. Um, though, but the fact that you're delivering water to Grondinghead Cross City um, means that instead of growing every 100 days, they're growing every 76 days. So it does help the increase in growing. So Mark Isle is looping this up. Are you going to have a separate platform or a spread station at Honningpool West to get the food out, Mark Isle? Uh, yes. Okay. I kind of see what you're doing here. It's a nice little neat thing. I like it. <laughs> I thought you would. Apart from the fact that we've got some um, 
sharp turns within the space of one square, but to be honest, it's near the station, so it doesn't really matter. It's only just accelerating. Exactly. It's looking good. So there goes the uh, path signals and the exit signals that he's putting in there. You could just use path signals on this whole network, but Mark Kyle likes to use the standard. Are they cheaper signals. or are they the same price? They're the same price, I think. No, they're cheaper. Are they? Yeah. 82 versus 82. Oh, has it gone up now? Yeah. They were only 72 first time. Oh, inf inflation, ones. mate. Inflation. <laughs> uh, shocking. Uh, speaking of money, uh, let's have a look to see how we're getting on. Last year, we got 323,000 income. That is not too bad. In 1967, we did start. We started this game in 1960, didn't we? Yes. 1960, yes. Uh, are you manually placing each of those signals, Mark Isle? Yeah, because of the changes in the direction. Okay, you can do the drag thing, and it'll only do it up to the next junction. It doesn't do it down the whole network. Anyway, um, we did spend a little bit on construction. We spent a little bit on vehicles. Uh, if you actually look at the amount of money we have, uh, it's still... Actually, we're, we're climbing a little bit now. We've gone past the 200,000 mark. That's not bad. Maybe... Uh, Maybe I can start doing some more passenger stuff soon. Uh, but let's have a look at the operating profit. Oh, it did rise again, but then it's it's dipped slightly. But I'm sure we can get that going. Let's look at our trains. Uh, we at the minute we only have trains. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. We only have trains at the minute. Um, We're in charge of passengers. It might stay that way, I don't know. But let's look at the operating profit from all of last year. Uh, 47, 27, 9, 27, 11, 27, 9, 16, 9. It appears that water trains with a length 3 are not long enough or are not doing something right. It means that we're not going to hit our goals when we get to the end. Uh, we won't get a perfect score on those trains. We need them to be a hundred, uh, sorry, ten thousand profit minimum. So we're going to have to visit these trains at some point, and I bet they're the ones. Yep, they're the ones at Henningbury, water pump. Um, maybe, maybe reducing that to one train might be an idea. There's um coming out of Kedham. There's trains with three water tanks, and they're making twenty-one thousand. Kedham's got four. It's got four. Oh, that one has got four, but... No, that one's three. There's two on that line. Oh, is there two trains? Yeah. Oh, okay. So one's one just coming in now. Yeah, yeah. I think it also depends... I mean, I don't think at <coughs> Kedham it's having to wait for more water. No, Kedham's got a good water supply. Yeah, at Henningbury, uh, the train is sat there at 88%, and it's just waiting for more water. Um, Mike, can I have some trains, please? Honning um, pool. West. There we go. Let's check it out. We're looking at Tad uh, the uh, south side of Tadpole Lake, aren't we? Just yep. by the way, I've decided uh, I'm just going to put a piece of road in in the middle of nowhere near Tadpole Lake um, here. Actually, I'm going to use track. And uh, it's just to show which way we're calling north. Okay. Okay, that's the standard kind of map symbol that I I understand it to be. Uh, obviously, the arrow being north. Uh, let's do that. There we go. It's too big. There we go. There we go. So um, yeah, to the south of Tadpole Lake, um, Mike's just put in the train. I'm, I presume you're going to be doing one for the other side as well, Mike. Yeah, it's just leaving now. Ah, there it goes, on its way. I'm liking it. It's only three long, uh, but it doesn't it doesn't have a lot of maize to pick up. 90 tonnes. It's not too <coughs> bad, 90 tonnes a month. It could be a lot better. No, it's a short track, though, but so yeah. doing lots of trips. And I see Mark Isles just put in Honningpool transfer, and he forgot to hold control. 
<laughs> yeah. Like... He, he, though he did put it in exactly where I would have. That's exactly what I'd have done. Um, so he's just <laughs> removing all that now. Get that control button held down, boy. Go on. Give it some welly. There we go. Notice the Honin Pool transfer label is still in grey because that's a, a station that doesn't exist. It is actually part of Honin Pool West. And actually what we're going to do is I'm going to rename that. I'm going to rename it to Honin Pool Food Plant. There we go. So uh, Mark Carl's linking that up. He's going to be linking up to the Grand Head Network. Yes. Let's put a sign in here. Oh, it's got. It's not Grand Head. It's Gone. Gond Head. There we are. Gond Head Network. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Are you going to try and integrate it with the same line as the water, or are you just going to? Um, yeah, I think so. Mm, okay, it'd be interesting to see how you how you do that, how you get on with it, but we'll we'll see. But um, I'm liking your design so far here, Mark. I like it's uh, pleasing to the OCD boy inside me. <laughs> Right, Mike, uh, you're a train manager at the minute. Um, mm -hmm. What can we do, if anything, to get those water trains above 9,000? You'd have to be another water pump. Uh, what about removing one of the trains? Would that help? Uh, yes. It wouldn't, it wouldn't help our ratings overall no. for that station, but I think it would help with the profit on the train itself. Well, just leave it for a while, because the amount of water producing has just gone up, so maybe it can cope now. Ah, has it? Oh, it's gone up to 63,000 litres. That's brilliant. I don't remember seeing a notification for that. I think I've got my notification settings messed up. Perhaps I should have a look at them uh, after this episode. <laughs> uh... Now let's have a look here. Now Mark Isle's done what I th what I was thinking about doing. Um, what I thought he might do. He has put a path signal in there. I would have put it closer to the junction by one, but yeah, he's generally doing what. Unless he's thinking about doing something else there. I'm not sure. Well, um, before we uh, start to wrap up today's episode, I'm going to open up the stations list. We haven't done this before in this particular series, and I'm going to sort the station list by total waiting cargo. So at the top, we've got what's got the most waiting cargo, and it's actually passengers. Uh, we've got quite a few passengers waiting at uh, Parfing Hill uh, and... Brenfing way. Uh, maybe if that continues we'll get another train going on the passenger network between them. Uh, I'm not sure, but let's have a look at the ratings. The ratings are good for Parting Hill and Brenfing way. The ratings... Poor. <gasps> no, that's terrible. We're going to have to get more trains going. Although, having said that, it's very far away from anywhere. Uh, these three are quite near each other, where that one's out on its own. So... <laughs> The journey times is, is much increased and the frequency of the trains is reduced. Perhaps next episode we should probably look at integrating Kedham into the passenger network so we can get a shuttle service going between Benfing Way and Kedham. Okay, Mike, can I have some food trains, please? Food trains, right. Okay. Just admiring um, Mark Isle's handiwork here with the with the train layouts, trying to just think through whether there's any improvements we could make. Generally, it's all quite efficient. That bit there is only three long instead of five, so it's not 100% efficient. 
But having said that, and as we said before, trains going into stations, it doesn't matter if they do slow down a little bit because they're going to be slowing down and stopping anyway. You just don't want your trains slowing down in the middle of your network. Once they're on their journey, they want to be just smooth and on their way. Um, but in general, it looks like we're doing pretty good. I can see Mike's buying stuff in Honningpool Train Depot. And even with the purchase of these new trains, we still have nearly two hundred thousand pounds to play with. Let's uh, end this episode, I guess, by having a look at the operating profit graphic. Oh, the operating profit graph is not too pretty over the last recent months. It's dipping a little bit. Oh dear, what do we think to that, boys? What what's going wrong? Um, I blame passengers. You blame passengers. <laughs> Actually, I think passengers is the they're one not, thing where we're getting a nice regular income. Uh, let's, they're, not, they're not paying enough. They're not paying enough money. You'd be good, right? And what This would be a nice addition to Open TTD. So, um, if anybody knows anybody on the dev team or any of the dev team are watching, for Open TTD 1.5, we want companies to be able to set fair prices. Therefore, be able to compete and the passengers in the city to choose what service they go on based on the ratings and the fare which would be quite interesting to have multiple companies working in the same city with different fares um, there'd be a bit of a price war going on and it could be an interesting extra dynamic to the game let's have a look here um, at the minute those two water trucks are still doing 9,000 let's have a look at the actual passenger ones Passengers, we've got 10,000, 7,000, 6,000, and 14,000. I think the 14,000 is the long haul train from uh, Dronning Hall to uh, Brentford Way. Uh, maybe we can get that to have more passengers later when the ratings goes up. Um, but we'll, we'll work on the passenger network. It'll get there. Train 11 isn't making that much, but again, these two towns have not expanded that much yet. In fact, Parfing Hill is expanding every 36 days which is, is quite good uh, and Pronfing, uh, Pronfing Field isn't expanding at all I think that needs to be our next target guys we need to get food and water into Pronfing Field and we've got water right next to it so maybe we can get some food in from somewhere nearby as well okay well that's all for now um, thank you very much for watching this has been Open TTD Let's Play Series 3 with Mad Mike and Mark Kyle and uh, until I see you next time it's goodbye from us. Goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye.